Welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining our webinar with NetStack. Presenting today, we have Warren Owen. So a huge thank you to him for being here today. So with that being said, I will hand things off to you, Warren. Thank you so much and welcome to everybody that's joining the webinar today. I'm absolutely delighted to share with the team today what some of the benefits are with having NetStock Bolt onto your Microsoft Suite and some of the cool things that you can expect when you obviously enter the world of inventory management and optimization. For today's session, I've got a couple of slides to position the common problem that we often find why ERPs are not the greatest at doing inventory management and then followed by that I'm going to get into the software and we're going to poke around and show everybody what some of the capabilities are. Again if there's any questions between Ali and Karen or myself we'll definitely be, be able to figure out how we can reply and maybe even do some of those questions within the tool. Without any sort of delay let's get going. As an overview NetStock as a business has been doing inventory management and optimization for probably the last 35 years and more recently we launched a product called NetStock Inventory Advisor going back to about 2010 in the US market. Now we connect to a vast majority of ERPs, but one of our best connections and probably the most favorite one is the Microsoft Suite because it's just really good products. That's really, really capable. And what we do as a business is we bring advanced planning and sort of modeling to your existing instance of Microsoft you have. Now, if you look at the presentation that I've got broken down here, we often get asked the question, why do we actually have inventory and why is it so hard to manage inventory? Now, the simple response to that is inventory is probably the most unfair thing to plan because everything in the world is working against your plan that you're continuously setting. And again, you can see this little breakdown just has suppliers, warehouses, and customers, but in these nodes, there's a risk to availability. And a lot of my colleagues will always hear me say, especially that I'm not being from the United States, this is probably one of the most unfair places to trade because you've got hundreds and thousands of customers, if not millions, having hundreds of thousands of options. So if you are unable to actually address that customer's need, they're definitely going to go somewhere else. So you really got to be so careful that you figure out where there's risk in your supply chain and then go and hedge that with things like safety stock or a really solid inventory plan. Again, as we always say that that risk to availability is either from supply or demand or both at the same time with a lot of seasonality and things like that thrown in. And often what we find is, and this is no fault to the ERP, they just typically not designed to understand risk. And ERP has got so many other things that it does really, really well. It doesn't do well with risk and it doesn't understand what the picture looks like tomorrow when using risk. Now, often when we work with customers, we often find, and it's a very simple picture that I've got laid out here, but it kind of it, it addresses what we often find. And that is that most customers will be either in a stock out state or overstate almost exactly at the same time. And often what happens there is that yesterday's fast mover might be tomorrow's slow mover. And the transition of capturing those in time is often where planners fall short. If you've got 10,000 items, for example, and you spend two minutes a day on one of those items, you can very quickly see how much time it's going to take to try and figure out what's currently happening and what the future holds for that item. So often we find that th this typical picture is, is really what we see for anybody kind of struggling to do inventory management on Excel. Now, as a business, NetStock gets a lot of ROI or return on investment very, very quickly because, again, you know, the mismanagement of inventory or the kind of misplacing the policies, we often within the first six months have the ability to reduce inventory levels, anything between 10 to 15 percent. And often those savings are really in items where you grossly overinvested and we often go we have the ability to cut that out very quickly. The other common problem that we also find is that within a business, there's multiple shareholders using the same inventory to achieve their individual targets. So if you're asking finance what they're going to do this year, it's, it's obviously increased profitability increase the turn of items and try and keep the cost as low as possible. And the same thing with sales, right? they're going to give you a revenue number. And often we find that these people just don't have a common platform to communicate, again, using the same thing to achieve their own individual goals, but they just don't have the ability to communicate on a common platform. Now, what Nessa brings to the table is we have what we call a risk methodology, where we can go and take these individual strategies, be it finance or sales or marketing. We have the ability to plug that into the tool, Go and understand again what our inventory risks are like, for instance, your demand risk, your supply risk, and then also your risk multipliers, which is your lead time that keeps changing or your orders that might change or just, just pure constraints from your supplier side. And once you have the inputs, we have the ability to then go and calculate what the inventory policy should look like, what the inventory uh, classification should look like. And I'm going to spend a lot of time in the tool today just kind of showing 
the team how we do those things, how we add that additional layer of planning capability, and then having the ability to know what we should be ready for if it doesn't work out. As I said earlier, as a business, we bring a lot of ROI very quickly. And often what we find with people being stuck in Excel uh, is that they just don't have the ability to, to get a lot of visibility quickly. So when I do demos, I often get the first wow 10 minutes in because there's a lot of capability that can very quickly be seen. Improved fill rates. So again, we always help you do more with less and obviously drive towards the optimal level. And obviously the optimized stock level is really having the ability to calculate what you should have when and as you leave a season or enter a season, what should that policy look like? Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the software. Now, when you're looking at the software, first of all, NetStock is completely cloud-based. So it's a tool that doesn't rely on on-premise servers or software or things like that. You do not need to buy additional software when you sign up to NetStock. It's a very simple process of signing up, connecting it to your ERP, getting your historical information in, and then kind of getting it work and setting the policy. It's a completely cloud-based platform. And right now, my demo environment is slightly out of date. It's going back to August 2022, but it's going to give you a nice insight as to what you can expect from a tool like NetStock. Now, you'll always be met with nine blocks in the system. The whole philosophy for the system is really built on the nine blocks, what we call the resultant matrix. And you'll see a lot of information like stock holding, excess stock and surplus orders, telling you very quickly from a financial perspective, I'm sitting at $26.5 million. My model is calculated to be 15.2, and that's really what the system says I should have. And I can very quickly see over benchmarks and on top there, month by month, I've actually come down 25% from an original benchmark start of 35 million. So it's always telling you the things that you're doing are pushing you in the right direction and obviously encourages us to do more of that. The system very quickly realizes that I've also got excess stock. And right now there's certain rules that we configured to identify when an item becomes an excess and what is excess and what do we do with that. And right now I can see that there's $8 million of excess over 412 items. And the top five highest contributors will always be highlighted under the under the tab at the bottom there. So if I'm going to spend any time today by trying to fix my current excess stock position, there's $1.9 million just over those five items. And I can also see various comments that people have added in there so that you can drive collaborative planning. Now, again, the system also has the ability to look into tomorrow. So it always tracks things like surplus orders. And again, these are orders that I've placed that I might no longer need in exactly that configuration or quantity or value. And right now the system says that's $3.5 million of inventory that if I can delay that, that'll be really good for the business. So that's a nice overview from a financial perspective. The next step that I want to touch on is service levels or fill rate. So you can very quickly see that we base our measurement of service and fill rate. And you can see the system understands both where I am at from an aggregated fill rate and what am I targeting. So it continuously knows where am I heading and what am I trying to achieve? Again, my full rate jumped up 25%, but it's still not ideal because I do have areas that are still in stockout positions and even one that I enjoy, which is future potential stockouts, where the system tells you the problem in the future, as well as telling you when that will occur and what the model should be or the impact thereof. So there's a lot of early warning things that will take place to continuously drive the planner's attention to what is important and what needs your attention today. Now, again, the system also tracks things like stock turns. It wants to understand the profitability about the business. Are you in the automotive aftermarket parts? And is your peers maybe turning the inventory 20 times a year, but you turning your inventory 10 times a year? This is really where the system will help you identify what are high movers, slow movers, and maybe items that only contribute to 0.6 turn per year is not really a good item for this business. And maybe it will help you identify those items to really rationalize them out. Now, lastly, as you get new items added to the ERP, because the two systems are tightly integrated, we'll know about uh, new items being added there. And again, you'll have the ability to see these new items and then go and put a forecasted man in or tell the system at least what you're expecting. Now, lastly, on the dashboard, you always have what I call the dipsticks. That'll just tell you at a high level what is really happening in this business. What is your OK inventory, new inventory, excess? So really, depending on what you're trying to solve as, that, as the task for that day, you'll have that information to get down there, look at those items and very quickly identify what you can do. So that in a nutshell is the dashboard looks like. The system is driven on classification. So, and I've got no doubt anybody that works with inventory will have some sort of 
way of identifying what an item is. Now, NetStock is a two-dimensional classification model. We want to understand items in both value as well as velocity. And you can see ABC being high, medium, and low value, L being high, medium, and low velocity. And again, we'll go and put rules in that actually drive what the system identifies as high, medium, and low, as well as non-stock and obsolete. Once you put these classification rules in, the system will very quickly calculate where you are. So if I'm trying to understand where's my stock value allocated, and I look at high value, high volume, which is obviously the top right, versus low value, low volume, which is bottom left, I can see between these two peaks, what is the breakdown of my items? I've got $26.3 million of total active inventory, and the system tells me where that, that is actively invested, as well as telling me where I'm generating the most demand, or maybe areas where I'm potentially stocked out, and it gives me the ability to very quickly go and see the top-down breakdown of the category, or I can actually go and actually click on that number and get the entire list of the items that the system says is in trouble for a future problem. Now, again, the matrix also helps you identify things like, you know, just seeing totally where's the item counts or what is the new items, where do they actually feature? So it really helps you identify where things are in your current business. Now, once we've identified or labeled the items as to what they are, we have a little trick up our sleeves where we can now go and actually set a policy for that particular category as to how the system needs to treat those items. And this really is where the magic happens. If you look at the same matrix and I focus on top uh, top right there, high value, high volume, the system will tell me that I've got 35 items currently in this position. And again, as the rules change, as the inputs change, these items will either be prioritized within a season or deprioritized out of a season based on things like movement or value or how we got the system configured. But right now for high value, high volume, there's 35 items. I'm asking the system to recommend an order every seven days. You can see the replenishment cycle is seven days. And I'm also asking the system that I want to achieve a 98% target full rate for those items. Now, the target full rate for us is very, very important because that's directly linked to the amount of safety stock that I want to add over and above the inventory that I have to really make sure that I offer the highest level of full rate available for these items. Now, the nice thing again is we don't know if 98 is the right number. So you can always go and change these things model them and then go and understand from an aggregated level what is the system recommending you need as well as looking at an individual category what are you achieving what are you targeting and whether that's the right thing i always make the analogy that trying to offer a 99 full rate on a company that sells bulldozers are going to be very different to a company that sells maybe pens or pencils so really, it's going to either cost you a billion dollars to do that or maybe a hundred dollars to do that. And that's the beauty of this tool because you can now very easily go and model those and identify what makes sense. So that's pretty much what we do from a policy and a classification perspective. Now, at an item level, every single day that you connect to Next, like often people ask me, how often does the system update? And by default, it will be once a day, depending on your environment. We all have customers that might want to update multiple times a day. Maybe they just need a once a day update. And essentially at night or in the morning or when the system updates, it's going to run through all the policies, all the classifications, and then very quickly tell me what, what do I have on hand for this item and what should I have. So it wants to drive that variance as low as possible. Now again, a lot of the key information comes from the ERP like the cost price or the selling price or the fact that this comes from a production line and there's a minimum manufacturing run. Um, it tells me a purchase factor and I can also have a whole bunch of groupings that I can bring into this. But more importantly, as the system updates with what happened in terms of sales orders, purchase orders, transfers, things like that, the system's going to run through the policy and then very quickly tell me whether I need to do something about this item. Right now, the system says very clearly that I'm in an excess stock position. That's uh, almost $600,000 worth of excess. And the system very quickly reminds me that I've got MOQs or MOVs associated to this item. I can see the stock on hand is currently 88 days or 5,700 bales. And I can very quickly see the system anticipates that being a, a 4.15 turn for the next year. The system understands things like overdue demand. So you sold something that you didn't have and you need to rectify that as you get more inventory, as well as understanding your available inventory and what you have on order to calculate your net stock position. It's going to continuously drive this every single day, as well as looking at the safety stock number, which you can very, very quickly see that net stock has a very unique way of having three inputs, two multipliers, and having at the end of the day, a dynamically calculating safety stock 
that understands each and every item that might be at risk. Now, when you talk about these risks, the, the risk multipliers will come in two forms. The first one is obviously supply. And again, if we look at your supply risk, we want to understand things like your planning lead time versus your actual lead time or your average. The system wants to also understand things like your demand. So it wants to understand, you know, looking at the history that I have by month. And again, I can also summarize this to see exactly by month what was sales, what was returns. How many of those are customers? How many of those were new customers? You know, what was the list of stuff that I sold and where in the month did things happen? I've got a lot of information that I can very easily access, as well as having the system automatically allocate a future demand plan based on the historical events. So it's always going to tell me, based on those things happening, this is what I recommend. But you as the user are always going to be connected to the external world. So you might very well go and say, ah, but this computer doesn't know about the event that I'm planning in December. So it's a Christmas event or you know whatever that might be. And I want to actually up the, up the levels or lower the levels. Now, the system's going to also look at what happened historically. It wants to understand what has been your forecast performance. Because again, forecasting is a process or demand planning is a process. And what the system would want to do is it wants to understand your forecast versus is your actuals and every time that it goes into a negative stock position it's going to do something about that and that doing something about that is going to mean that we're going to increase that buffer as you have a very lumpy or volatile uh, forecast of demand now ultimately if you have things like bill of materials we in this particular example you can see that the system understands that this item is actually made up of a lot of components there's a whole bunch of components going in there the system has the ability to allocate safety stock policy at that level as well as the individual item that i'm consuming in this bill of material and right now if i blow this the other way around i can see that this component goes into a whole bunch of other finished goods and there by month i can very quickly understand when the system understands it's going to consume that in an assembly or a work order. So this item on its own will have its unique way of calculating safety stock, its unique inventory policy, and its unique policy that it gets calculated. So the system really offers a true multi-echelon inventory optimization experience. Lastly, the system also has the ability to understand that once I assemble this item, I've got three branches that consume this from me. So in these in individual breakdowns, I'm actually going to get a recommended order where the system says on the 5th of September, I need to move five units from my central store to my small branch one because uh, it needs it, it knows that it's going to get consumed. And lastly, every single item gets what we call a rolling 365 day. In this case, you can see it's a two year rolling for uh, projection where the system understands exactly every single day where are you and where you need to be. And right now you can see that I'm grossly overstocked at 5,700 units. And the system says I need to, from a model perspective, be all the way down there at 778. So you don't need to manually go and, go and figure out what you need to order for the item. You don't need to actually go and figure out what your min and your max levels are. The system does that every time that it gets more information or every time that something gets updated, the system reruns that to tell me from a calculated perspective, what is min, what is max, what is open, and what is my closing position for a rolling 365 days. Now, the system is going to recommend orders. Right now, I can see that the system says, based on what I can understand now, here's your future orders, and this is when I'm going to recommend the orders. And as these orders get recommended, you as the user will be able to see them in your orders tab. You'll very easily be able to see items that are required for a location. Is it a particular branch that I'm planning for, or am I doing orders for my distribution centers? Right now, I can see that production line one has a huge level of urgency there. So it says, hey, Warren, if you're going to do something today, go and look at this item. You've currently got 46 or $47 million of outstanding purchase orders. And right now, that 927 units that's currently outstanding. A couple of neat little things that we have in NetStock is we have the ability to use that individual stock projection to actually calculate a future state. So a lot of our customers buying from far, far away, maybe might be experiencing things like Chinese New Year. And suddenly I now need to order 90 days worth of goods. So there you can see the system is now calculated for a 90 day future order, that's $17.7 .7 million. Or if I bring this back down to one, I can see that it's only 4.9. Now, when I create the order, the system is going to go and get all the information that it has on this particular item or from this particular vendor where I can actually go and see things like, you know, what is the volume? What is the value? What is the weight? 
often we find that people buy in metric but plan in imperial so the system has the ability to understand that as well as have the ability to understand multiple units of measure i buy this item in bales but i might consume it in eaches or in pounds or whatever that might be and it also gives you a nice little feature where you can add a note there to say that this is the last range available once this item is bought is actually going to be discontinued by the vendor now again because we are so tightly connected to microsoft once you've created the order there, you can very easily push this back to your ERP. So whether it is Great Plains or, you know, it's a, a, a D365 or, you know, whatever you're running, we have a connector that's built to really enable you to push this back to the platform and then obviously go through all the rules and, and, and things that you already have within the business. Now, again, that is NetStock in a nutshell. There's obviously a lot of things that we still have that we can go through. But on the next step, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit more about the implementation side of things because this isn't a tool where you kind of just you know click and things happen we do need to go through an implementation process so what the system what we do is at netstock is for the last 20 plus years we've really refined the implementation process because it's a very difficult topic and often we need to extract a lot of tribal knowledge within the team to understand why things happen the way they do so we really summarize this in five steps and the typical implementation takes eight to twelve weeks depending on complexity it could take longer if you're a much much more complex environment but essentially in the launch phase Phase, we really get together and we agree what we're going to go after and often this is where somebody will say Warren I've got 25 million dollars of inventory value at cost I know that it should be at about 17 and I, I need you and the team to help me drive that down so that often we set the goals as to what we're going to go after the next step in the journey is to integrate and as I said one of the key things here is that we have certified connectors for most of the Microsoft platforms and we can very easily connect and get the data unfortunately as we all know that's got lived through a software project that data will never be perfect so we spend a lot of time on unpacking where these gaps in the data how we can fix those things and we often bring custom data in where a customer might have a unique environment where they they do things a little bit sort of non-standard so we need to bring those and consider those things in and once you've got the system integrated the real hard work starts with refine and learn refine really is where we model the various policies and strategies that we're trying to achieve to really see what makes sense for the business really go and classify items understand super sessions old items replacing new items items being sold in a bundle bill of materials phantom bombs things like that we really go through all the hard work of really making sense of the system and then putting it into play for future use and then we really train people uh, up into the tool to be as proficient as I am or even better, because really that's the key thing. You need to know how to use the tool. We've got within the system called Simon, which is Simple Inventory Management on NetStock, which has a whole bunch of courses outlined in a video environment, uh, very similar to Udemy or something that, you know, those online courses where as the users or the power users will have time to do these things, they can systematically go through these videos, get their certification and ultimately work their way up to understanding the, the system in more detail. Once we got the system completely implemented and everybody's trained up, we then put it in use and we really make sure that the system's delivering a meaningful answer and, and really make sure that everybody's on the same page. And we often in a couple of months revisit with the team to try and do small tweaks and changes to make sure that everything works. Now, NetStock is completely, one of our biggest operations is in Australia and North America, with North America obviously being the, the largest for us. So you're going to get a lot of support in a local call center that's available 24-5, and you get a lot of in-app support. So we've really built a system to make sure that you'll have support 24-5 instantly if people are available to really solve the problem. The system also has a single version. We don't have multiple versions of the tool. So anytime that anybody helps you on the tool, they will know exactly what they're looking at. They'll know your configuration and they'll be able to support you. So that in a nutshell is what the system does, how we do it, the magic that we've achieved. And that's pretty much the onboarding process. And once you do all of these things right, the recap on the ROIs are really huge. And I would encourage anybody that wants to unpack this in more detail to maybe book a separate session where we can talk about your individual needs. Thank you so much, Warren. And thank you everyone for joining. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Excellent. Thanks, Ali. Thank you so much.